Another earthquake of magnitude 7.6 has hit the southern Turkey at 1.24 p.m. local time. This comes hours after over 1,400 people were confirmed dead after a strong 7.7 magnitude earthquake jolted Turkey this morning. The second powerful earthquake of magnitude 7.6 hit southern Turkey with the epicenter near Alpistan. Turkey President Erdogan said at least 912 people have died in the earthquake that hit this morning, adding that rescue operations are still underway. Meanwhile, the official death toll in the government-controlled region of the neighboring Syria has risen to 500. According to local media reports, the death toll is likely to climb, as there has been major damage to thousands of buildings. Many people were asleep as the earthquake hit in the early hours of the day. Dramatic scenes of buildings toppling within moments were seen in Saldi Urfa in Turkey. Tremors were also felt in multiple countries, including Lebanon, Cyprus, Greece, Jordan, Iraq, Georgia and Armenia. The earthquake struck at around 4.17 a.m. local time. It struck near the Gaziantep in southeastern Turkey and reportedly lasted for about a minute. Gaziantep is one of Turkey's key industrial and manufacturing hubs and borders Syria. U.S. Geological Survey reported another shallow 6.7 magnitude earthquake in the region about 15 minutes later. According to Syria's state media, several buildings were damaged in the northern city of Aleppo and the central city of Hama. In Damascus, buildings shook and many people rushed down in fear. According to Turkey's vice president, who said the earthquakes had a very high impact on the region. Now, wildfires through parts of Chile have killed at least 13 people. Authorities are struggling to contain the dozens of blazes sparked by a summer heat wave. The fires have affected more than 100 homes and destroyed thousands of hectares of land. The government has declared a state of disaster in several central southern regions. The area is home to farms and forest land. Firefighters and aircrafts are trying to battle the flames. Heading towards the heart of a blaze, trying to contain deadly wildfires, it's dangerous and almost non-stop work. We've been working since noon yesterday. Combined with weather conditions, high temperatures and a lot of wind, they cause great destruction, both to vegetation and unfortunately structures. A scorching heat wave is making their job harder, along with the fact that Chile is suffering from 13 years of drought. The flames have engulfed hundreds of homes and huge areas of farmland and forest in the worst affected areas. With the current heat wave showing no signs of cooling off soon, firefighters will need all the help they can get to put out the blazes. Today, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau introduced legislation to legalize physician-assisted suicide. It's a deeply personal uh, issue that affects uh, all of Some us. Some believe it is their only option. We are very concerned about the exclusion of individuals um, with mental illness. No one should be faced with such an impossible choice. Deeply personal, deeply divisive. The question of who should be allowed assisted dying has driven up tensions in Canada. Canada first introduced medical assistance in dying or MAID, where medics can help people end their life, in 2016. At the time, it was only open to those whose natural death was reasonably foreseeable, for example, patients with terminal cancer. Five years later, the law was extended to adults who had a serious incurable illness or disability if they were in an advanced state of decline and endured intolerable physical or psychological suffering. It was, however, not open to those with only a mental illness. That restriction was planned to be lifted in March this year, but yesterday the Canadian government put forward a bill to delay it for another year. My name is Roger Poli. There have been long-held concerns about MAID, including the idea pressure would be placed on patients to take up the option. The hospital SSS and nurses were trying to coerce me into an assisted death by threatening to charge me $1,800 per day or force discharge me without the care I need to live. I felt pressured by these staff raising assisted dying rather than relieving my suffering with dignified and compassionate care. 
Nurses and ambulance workers staged uh, yet another strike in parts of England today as the biggest round of NHS walkouts uh, began. This marks uh, the beginning of walkouts by NHS staff in several parts of the country. This is in fact said to be the biggest industrial action in the history of NHS. Earlier, a number of unions suspended strike action in Wales. People are demanding increase in pay to keep pace with double-digit inflation. The UK is currently witnessing one of its worst ever cost-of-living crises.